Welcome to this teaching on the Ark of the Covenant in God's throne room in heaven. And in this teaching, I'll give you deep prophetic revelations that the Lord showed me about the second coming of Christ within the Ark of the Covenant in heaven. This is the ministry of repentance preparing the way for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, praise the Lord, everybody. Today, we'll be looking at the Ark of the Covenant in God's throne room in heaven. But I would like first to walk you through background information about the Ark of the Covenant. Why is the Lord bringing back the Ark of the Covenant? Hallelujah, everybody. Number one, in the background information, we'll look at the history of the Ark of the Covenant. I'll look at both the Ark of the Covenant, the one that Moses had, and the new one that the Lord showed me, the one of the new covenant in God's throne room in heaven. What a mighty day in heaven and on earth today for me to be able to share with you some of these deep revelations the Lord showed me last year. It's been more than a year and the Lord did not allow me to release this for some time. And I praise the Lord and thank Him so much for giving me this opportunity to share this with you today. So we will look at the background information on the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I will also look at the structure of the Ark of the Covenant. And you will be able to see some changes that have taken place the difference between the Ark of the Covenant that Moses had, that the one he was instructed and commanded to build, and the one that's within the throne room of God in heaven. And you see a lot of changes that have taken place within the Ark of the Covenant in the throne room in heaven, preparing for the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'll also look at the spiritual significant, uh, hallelujah, I'll look at the throne room of God in heaven. And I'll walk you systematically into a vision, a mighty vision, when there was a mighty visitation the Lord gave to me. The Lord gave me a mighty visitation in a very unusual way and took me up into heaven and opened for me the throne room in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I'll walk you through that vision. And so you'll be able to see some part of the throne room of God Almighty in heaven. What a mighty day in heaven and on earth today. And I'll also walk you through the prophetic revelations of what he showed me for the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then we'll look at the, the relationship between what the Lord showed me within the throne room in heaven and the spiritual significance of that within the release of the Spirit of John the Baptist preparing the way for the second coming of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord everybody. The Lord is coming back soon. Amen. The Ark of the Covenant represents specifically the holiness of our Almighty God. The Ark of the Covenant does show to us very clearly the gap between the living God, the holy God, and sinful man. You can see that the Ark of the Covenant also does reveal to us a lot of things about the nature of the God that we serve. And I want, I want to walk you, walk you through some of these things about the nature of the Lord we serve. One of them from looking at the Ark of the Covenant that he showed me in heaven and the one Moses had, you see that we serve a God of judgment. Hallelujah. Remember that the day of the Lord is a day of judgment. So you see that in Exodus 25, verse 21. You see when he told Moses, I want you to build the Ark of the Covenant, specific dimensions, and put in the testimony of the Lord that I've given you. And that too, I'll hold that against you. I'll hold it as testimony against the people. Hallelujah. The God of judgment. We also see that we serve the God of love. John chapter 3, 16. We see that we serve the God of mercy. The God of mercy. We we'll look at the mercy seat, which is a very important part of the Ark of the Covenant. And then we also see that we serve a God of covenant. He's a very powerful God of covenant. He's a respecter of covenant. And he respects covenant because of his name's sake. He does it for his name's sake. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And we also see that we serve a God of life, a God of resurrection. I walk into a lot of that. We see that we serve from the earth of the covenant. We, we, we see a God of power and authority. And hallelujah, praise the Lord. We see the triunity of God from the earth of the covenant. We see the trinity, the triunity of God. And the other thing we see from the earth of the covenant is that God is a God of wealth. We see how the whole Ark of the Covenant and the throne room actually lined up with pure gold, different types of gold that walk into that today. Thank you, praise the Lord. And then we see that we serve a living God. We see a God who is able to change his mind. You see in the beginning, the covenants that he had are walking through the history of God signing covenants with men. 
but in the earth of the covenant, you see the testimony of the Lord put in there. And now you see the changes that I'll walk you through that have taken place within the throne room of God in the ark of the covenant in heaven. You see that the Bible now replaces some of those things in heaven, in the ark of the covenant. And you see the blood of Jesus and I'll walk you through the specific steps that the blood of Jesus went through in the ark of the covenant during the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior and the resurrection. And in the ark of the covenant, we also see that we serve an infinite God. We see the wealth of God, the wealth of His nature through the ark of the covenant. And I'll walk you through some of those things. Praise the Lord, everybody. So let us look at the structure of the ark of the covenant. And I'll divide this into two. I'll look at the ark of the covenant in the Old Testament, the one that Moses built, the one Moses was commanded to build. And I will also look at the ark of the new covenant in the throne room of God in heaven. And I have it right here. And I want to just to mention something here. When the Lord showed me this ark of the covenant in the throne room in heaven, I went through a period of time. It took more than a year when he did not allow me to share this with anybody. I tried to share and most of the time he shut my voice when I was trying to call people. And in many cases when I was talking about it, sitting at home, I passed out. And then later I began to understand that he was not willing yet. It was not yet time ready for me to begin sharing some of these deep things about the ark of the covenant in the throne room of God Almighty in heaven. And then later, after one year, then in a mighty vision, he came and said, Now you can produce the message. Now you can talk to the people about what I have shown you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And when I started working with the Ark of the Covenant, I, 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 I was working from visions with graphics designers on the computer. And, and you saw it was a, it's a very tremendous experience. I want you to know. I want you to know that I was walking from the vision, they were, they were putting every single thing I was telling them from the vision the Lord had shown me more than a year ago, and they were putting it in, and every time I went back home, I, I went down on my knees, and I asked, Lord, this is too holy, I don't want to do it alone. Almighty King, please help me and do this with me. I don't want to err on this one here. And I kept asking him along the way, after every single stage, Lord, did we do it all right? I printed out a copy from the computer, brought it home. And in a mighty visitation, every single time I asked him, he showed me what we had done in the computer. And he, he said, move this down here, move this down here, move this here. So it has been such a mighty experience with God Almighty. He was involved in building this with me. It was a tremendous experience also with the graphics designer himself. When I always came back in the morning, I said, the Lord moved this down. The Lord said we should do this color here. And uh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We serve a living God. What a great blessing to be able to be part of this. Hallelujah. So in the Old Testament, what we see? We see that God instructed and commanded Moses to build the Ark of the Covenant with specific instructions. And we see that in Exodus chapter 25, verses 10 to 22, where he gave Moses specific dimensions in cubits, you know, how to build the Ark of the Covenant. What dimensions are we doing? What dimensions of the length? And we also see in Exodus chapter 37, verses 1 to 9, specific dimensions that God gave Moses when he told him to build the mercy seat. And that is so interesting. I want to draw your attention here to one thing. You see that when he's telling Moses to build the Ark of the Covenant, he's telling him to build the chest with the wood of acacia and line it with gold outside and inside. And then he comes back later in 37, verse 37, I mean, chapter 37, verses 1 to 9, and gives him specific information how to build the mercy seat. You begin to understand the mind of God there. You begin to see that the mercy seat is a very specific part of the Ark of the Covenant, very separate, very different, very divine out of the Ark of the Covenant. We'll be talking a lot about that today. Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to this ministry of repentance. So we will be looking at today, uh, inside the Ark of the Covenant of the Old Testament, what, what, what do you see there? We see the wooden chest I've just described, and then we see the mercy seat of pure gold. That was the slab of pure gold. And remember, pure gold, that must be very heavy, what Moses built. And the other thing you see, the two rods, and I'm intentionally not going into this Ark of the Covenant as I described this one in the Old Testament, and I'll explain to you why, and you see the changes that have taken place in the Ark of the Covenant preparing for the second coming of the Lord. So you have, you have, uh, hallelujah, it consists of the wooden chest lined with gold outside and inside. It consisted of the mercy seat of pure gold, that's a slab of pure gold, and the specific instructions about how to build that given to Moses. 
And what do you see? You also see the wooden rods, the wooden sticks that are used to carry the Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. And then inside the Ark of the Covenant, Moses built. What do you see? The Lord told him specifically to take the laws, the tablets, the stone tablets of the testimony, and put it inside there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You read that from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 26. You also read in Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 4. And the second thing you find inside the Ark of the Covenant, the Old Testament, is Aaron's bodied rod. You see that in Hebrews 1, uh, hallelujah, Hebrews 9, 1 to 7. And the third thing you see inside the Ark of the Covenant is the jar of manna, the food that God gave the Israelites from heaven when they were in the desert. Praise the Lord. And then what do you see? The Lord also gave Moses specific instructions on how to build the cherubim of glory, praise the Lord, and put them on top of the Ark of the Covenant that you see in Exodus chapter 37 verse 8. And I just want to mention something here about the cherubim that Moses was instructed to build. You see that the cherubim were facing each other, and their wings were touching each other, overshadowing the mercy seat. And at the same time, they were looking at the mercy seat, and I'll explain to you what that means in terms of the New Covenant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Again, welcome to the ministry of repentance, preparing the way for Christ. Now, let us look at the earth of the new covenant in heaven. In October last year, in October the year 2003, the Lord God took me into heaven and opened the door to the throne room and presented to me the earth of the new covenant of God Almighty in the throne room of heaven. And what a mighty vision. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I'll describe to you, it's a great blessing today for me to be able to share with you this vision. What a mighty day in heaven and on earth that today I am allowed to be able to share this with the people of the world, with the church, so you can be able to understand within the prophetic timeline where we are towards the second coming of the Lord. I will give you the vision of the, the, the vision that the Lord showed me, the vision he presented to me in a mighty visitation when he brought me to the throne room in heaven and showed me the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, now everybody listen to this. Leading to the throne room of God in heaven, leading to the throne room of God in heaven, there is a walkway which is lined with gold, and that walkway has two strips bordering it. The walkway has lighter gold, which is very glorious with a lot of light. Walk, as, as you walk, as you move into the throne room, into the position of the throne in heaven, and then that walkway is what I'm describing here right now. You see the lighter gold here. You, the, 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 the lighter gold lining the central zone and then you see that the bordering strips are made of reddish brown gold, very rich gold also and those border the central zone towards the throne room of God in heaven and the other thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that uh, as I approach as I approach the throne room walking on this walkway as I approach the throne room then one of the earth angels stopped me I, hallelujah. And I found myself kneeling down on this side of the walkway, on this side of the walkway. I found myself kneeling down and then, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I, I immediately, the archangel was standing in the central zone of the walkway. And then he moved away from the central zone and moved very close to where I was kneeling down. Uh, immediately after the earth angel stepped out of the walkway, the cherubim of glory, two cherubim of glory immediately came carrying the earth of the new covenant of the Lord, walking, they were walking, and they, they, they were walking within the central zone, bringing the ark of the new covenant of the Lord to the position of the throne. Hallelujah. And they walked in style. I want you to know that they walked sideways in style and it was so holy that they walked bowing their heads down. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the other thing I want to bring your attention to is that, hallelujah, the cherubim of glory, as they walked, they, 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 they bowed their heads down and the earth angel told me the reason they did that is because that was a very holy sight. Holy of holies within heaven. That was a very holy sight. That's why the cherubim of glory even had to walk with their heads bowed down. So the cherubim of glory brought the ark of the covenant and placed it at the position which is the throne position. Position of the throne. And I want you to know that within the throne room of heaven there are different positions. And I want you to know that the ark of the covenant is a centerpiece 
within the throne room of heaven. And what a mighty revelation this is for us today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Immediately I was able, when they placed the Ark of the Covenant within the throne position in heaven, within the throne room, I was able, immediately the Lord brought it very close to me so I could be able to see. He drew my attention to the handles that the cherubim of glory were handling. And you see very clearly how finely molded they were with gold. And you could, when you look at it from a distance, you would think a woven or some knitted kind of rock. So it was very beautifully woven. I've never seen anything like that in my life. But the Lord brought that very close to me and drew my attention to that one. And the other thing again that I want you to know is that uh, the Lord brought my attention to this part here. Everybody, I want you to focus on this right now. He, he drew my attention to the fact that between the mercy seat and the wooden chest itself, there was, there, there was this step-like kind of ascending, ascending molding, ascending design here. And I want you people to understand this is, this is a deviation from what Moses built. Uh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. No wonder the Lord drew my attention to this. You begin to see that there was an ascending stepwise design, step-like design ascending towards the mercy seat from the chest. I see from what Moses built that there was a descending step-like, descending down. So again, I want you to understand that we serve a very infinite God, a very rich God, and a living God. So there are changes that are going to be taking place within the throne room, within the earth of the covenant, moving from the old to the new covenant. Praise the Lord, everybody. And the other thing that the Lord drew my attention to is that uh, the Ark of the Covenant in heaven is very glorious. I walked you through the, the, the glorious one. And again, well, I've just mentioned the angular stepwise design there. That's a very significant thing that we have to note within this new Ark of, new, uh, the, Ark of the New Covenant. And then the cherubim, now this is so significant. Immediately the Lord drew my attention. There were two cherubims carrying it. What happened? The Lord drew my attention to the cherubim on the right hand side. The cherubim on the right hand side. The cherubim on the right hand side walked and came towards the left hand side and peeled off a, a portion here. Peeled off a portion of this chest here. And that portion immediately he peeled it off. There was a beautiful, there is a beautiful inscription of scripture there. And again, the Holy Spirit has specifically instructed me not to reveal, not to preach. The scripture that was beautifully inscribed here, it is still beautifully inscribed there. What a wonderful day today in heaven and on earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so the, this cherubim moved back to the right hand side. Again, we see very clearly that many times we think that the two cherubims play the same roles. But now you begin to see that the cherubim on the right hand side that the Lord was drawing my attention to, is, 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 is very different. It goes on that side and peels off that chest. And I will let you know the revelation, the deeper revelation of what that means, the peeling off of that part of the chest and the scripture that's inscribed there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, then, then the next thing I want to draw your attention to or in this teaching is that the cherubim, hallelujah, they faced each other uh, looking at the mercy seat and then they bowed down and covered their faces with, with, with their wings. And then the Holy Spirit particularly allowed me now to focus on this cherubim on the right hand side and then finally, uh, hallelujah, praise the Lord, finally the cherubim, the, I mean, uh, the Holy Spirit drew my attention to, the, to the, the area behind the throne room. Hallelujah, praise be to the Lord God Almighty. The area behind the throne room and the river of life, and we'll talk about a lot of that later. But I want you to understand that immediately the cherubim, uh, the cherubim on the right hand side walked back to its position. Then the archangel stepped up within the central zone, the central zone of the walkway, and I was still kneeling down on the right hand side facing the, facing the throne, and then he called me and said, come, let us pray. And immediately I realized that I had gotten from my knees and I was standing there, and he asked me, he asked me to place my left hand on his shoulder. At the same time I realized he had placed his right hand on my shoulder and he asked me to lift up my right hand as he lifted up his left hand and I, I found myself leading the prayers and in the prayer